if at no time does it wish to have more than 8 million United Government bonds or construction loans. So this part sounds like performance requirements, right? No more than 8 million in government bonds or construction loans. Or it can be phrased as a resource limitation. Limit your investment exposure to government bonds to no more than 8 million. Construction loans to no more than... So this part, we know how to do it. So the at the very start, we need to ask, how many question marks are there, right? So Winslow has to decide for every month or rather at the start of every month, right? So there are four months at the start of every month. Uh, it doesn't ask one question. It doesn't ask one question because it doesn't ask how much money should I invest? That's not good enough. Why not? Think about it. If you are the fund manager at the start of the month, you ask how much should I invest? Suppose someone tells you one million. What do you do? You then ask, right? Um, how much do I invest in the government bonds, construction loans? Leave it as liquid, right? So you have three question marks at the start of every month. That's going to easily give us 12 decision variables. Okay. Now that might sound a lot, but in commercial settings, we can run into thousands of decision variables and that's okay. okay think of it this way if we can formulate all these decision variables carefully into a model by just clicking the solver button we straight away know exactly how much to invest in each month at the start of each month isn't that great we just execute and follow finish our job is done right so so that's exactly what we are trying to do here so fair enough, indeed, <clears throat> um, we have 12 decision variables here. And if you are new to this, you need to be uh, sort of picking this notation up on G of I, G of 1, 2, 3, 4. So G1, 2, G2, G3, G, G4, each representing the amount of investment uh, at the start of the month, right? All right, so at the start of, just to be absolutely clear about the timing within the month I, no doubt about it, it's at the start, not just in. In is not good enough because if we say GI, G of 1 is 1 million, we don't know which day of the month to invest in still, right? So we do not want ambiguity. We don't want the situation when you know the, the optimal solution and still cannot make decision that's weird that's strange that means your your decision variable is not defined clear enough that we can execute right away so at the start of each of the month we need to know how much to put into government construction and leave as liquid all right now with that that means g of one let's look at g of one right when we invest one million g of one at the start of month one, we don't get the two thousand uh, back yet, the two percent back yet. We uh, the twenty thousand, right? So we don't get the interest back yet. However, we are including that into our calculation here because we will get back at the start of month three. Month three start is still within our four month scenario. So you say, well, no big deal. But let's look at this. At the start of month four, suppose G4 is 1 million, right? We will invest 1 million at the start of the fourth month, knowing that we'll get 2% back at the start of month six. But that's outside our horizon, our planning horizon. Still, we add it here. Why? Why? It's not, a, it's not true all the time. It's true because our problem owner says we are interested in maximizing our accrued interest. So the fourth month interest is indeed accrued to us, barring any unforeseen economic crisis, right? So it is accrued to us and we can count that as accrued interest even though it's not cash on hand. So we do add it in. So far so good, all right? 
And for the same reason, we add in uh, C3 and C4 investments, even though they, the actual uh, um, interest or returns will be in the month of uh, six, right? Six, uh, six month, seven month. We still add them. All right, so, so that's why we basically simplify the problem in that sense by adding in everything when you have accrued interest. Now, uh, let's look at the first month's, first month's uh, constraint. In the first month, we have 20 million, right? We have 20 million. And we are using the equal sign to express this. How is that the case, right? First of all, how do we tell the model that we are talking about the first month? How will the model not misunderstood it as this is the second month and we have an injection of 20 million? No, that's not true, right? How did we tell the model? By two Cs. Careful and consistent use of the suffix one. So, of course, if we jumble them up, G1 plus C2 plus L3, then we are solving some sort of a problem that we don't even understand, right? But by writing them as G1, C1, L1, it means, it means that uh, the $20 million will be made up of the sum total of government investment, construction loan, and liquid left in the bank. Another way to think about it, another perspective is, the injection of 20 million at the start of the first month will be split three ways. How do we know? Well, because there are three variables on the left. Split three ways to the left into three containers, not necessarily equally. All right. We'll let Solver decide how much money goes into each, but there are three channels for this 20 million to pour into. So this is nice because the way we have described it as a, as a mechanism allows us to you then in, in future use equal sign to mimic what is happening in real life. Whenever we have a resource right, to split n ways or three ways in this case, then we just have three variables on the left and the resource amount total on the right. That would do. Okay? Um, and in this case, we'll split in, into G1, C1, L1. So far, so good. Right? But remember, we also have the varying uh, uh, investment horizon, the two-month maturity and the three-month maturity to think about. How do we express that? So by being careful and consistent again. So in the second month, we write it this way. The second month's total available fund, which is the same as the 20 million that we had, right? Total available fund on the right-hand side, is going to be split three ways into G2, C2, L2. So they are not the same as G1, C1, L1. Right? First thing first, how much money is left in the bank? Well, the 20 million is to be split three ways. Nothing is left on the right-hand side. Nothing. Zero. Because it's strict equality. Zero. However, what goes into L1 is the liquid form that we park in the bank, right? And that amount may be 3 million, maybe 0, maybe 10 million will be the amount that is available to us for investment. Yes? Plus the fact that one month has lapsed and so we get 0.75% in addition to L1. Right? So that's money in the bank plus one month of deposit interest. So that liquid cash can be 10 million 10.5 million, whatever it is, right? Is that now uh, subject to the same mechanism? That amount is going to be split three ways into three investment variables, G2, C2, L2. Okay. And then we can keep doing that because for the third month, the fourth month, they are the same. It's just that the money available for investment to be split three ways will be different. But now we know how, right? Why didn't we add G1 here? Because at the start of the second month, G1, G1, not G2, G1, G1 takes two months to mature. So at the start of the second month, it's not available. It's still being loaned out to the government, right? And so we don't have that. Likewise for C1, 
it's being loaned out to the to, to the construction company, we cannot access that for further reinvestment. So that's not available. That absence is how we tell uh, our model that G1 will take longer than one month to mature. Okay, so when it comes to G3, which is the start of the third month, that's already two months from the start of the first month. So now, not only that the previous month's liquid amount plus interest right, is available to us, G1 is also available to us now with the 2% return, whatever was in G1. If Excel so decides to allocate 0 to G1, then adding this term here mathematically is correct because it's still 1.02 times 0. But if Excel allocated 10 million into G1, then at the start of the third month, 2% and the original G1 will appear in our account, making them available for us to think about splitting into three ways again.